All right, welcome back to the Field of 68's After Dark. I am Jeff Goodman, joined by Randolph Childress and Kevin Sweeney. And I mentioned it earlier, but uh, we are running a Field of 68 pool over at BracketFanatics.com, the best website to host your NCAA tournament pool. Providing It's going to provide a bracket experience unlike anything else. Bracket Fanatics is similar to Yahoo and ESPN. You can invite your friends, make picks, watch those picks go up in flames. But what makes Bracket Fanatics different is that they eliminate the hardest part of running a pool, the payouts. Everyone that joins your pool must pay an entry on the site. Once the NCAA tournament is over, Bracket Fanatics handles the payouts for you based on whatever the parameters you set. So you don't have to worry about chasing down guys like Sweeney to make sure he actually paid his buy-in. And you can make side bets uh, all tournament long because who doesn't love the side bets, right? Uh, your bracket may have been busted, but you can still make it all back once, you know, Randolph gets a, a little too overconfident. Uh, so head over to BracketFanatics.com. Join the Field of 68's bracket group. It's free to enter. And make sure you host your pool on Bracket Fanatics for the absolute best March Madness experience. Uh, sign up today. All right, guys. Big week, big, big week for a lot of teams, a lot of coaches. I'm going to hit you with what should be an easy question, but I don't know if it will be. And we haven't talked this through at all. This is completely out of nowhere. I can't wait to hear your answers. But my question to you is the team or teams with the most to gain or lose, not name Xavier, because I think everybody and their mother is going to choose Xavier. If you say pick one team, it's Xavier. They're on the bracket. They've been terrible the last month or so. Uh, Sweeney, I'll start with you. Who, who's the team right now with the most in the line? Yeah, I mean, I think the interesting thing is that the bubble feels relatively settled, right? I mean, like, you've got Indiana and Rutgers kind of fighting for it. Uh, SMU's right on the cut line. I think that really is my answer. I mean, SMU, you know, mm. this year with, you know, this is their group. You know, Kendrick Davis is a senior. He's been around this thing. You're yep. right at the cut line. I mean, I, I think I literally have them as my last team in the field. If they don't have to win the conference tournament, but they have to make some noise. They probably have to beat Memphis to feel like they're in on Selection Sunday. And so, you know, I, I just think for me, you know, considering the struggles that they've had the last several seasons, this this one means a lot to, to get to get to the NCAA tournament, even if it's just the first four with Kendrick. You're not going to get another Kendrick Davis often. I mean, he is a special dude for them you know, a thousand plus point score, high level assist guy. If you, if you can't parlay that into an SW tournament bid, you kind of wonder when the next one's coming. RC. Believe it or not, I'm going to go to Wake. Ooh, they're, 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 look they're, at you. They're, no, they're right there that, you know, they can ill afford to slip up in this tournament to start, you know, they, they are like the last four in. And, and so you slip up and, you know, and, and don't show up tomorrow. I mean, where, where does that put you? I mean, I, that that could very well slide them out. And when you got coach of the year in the ACC and player of the year and a second team in LaRavia, I mean, don't get me wrong. They got, they, they've, they've earned the right where they are now, but they, they're barely in. And they got a lot of pressure tomorrow to come out and perform in the ACC tournament. I'm going to go with the Big Ten, like three teams. I'm going to choose all three. Uh, I'll start with Indiana. Indiana. They got to win at least one. I think they, I think they win one. They're in. I think they're in in the first four. I know every bracketologist is telling me they got to win two. I still believe if they win one, they get in the first four because I think the NCAA tournament committee, they're going to be looking for big names to get in that first four. Um, Michigan, I think to get out of the first four, they got to beat Indiana. I think if they lose, shoot, you, you could have both of them playing in different first four games. Who knows? And Rutgers, they're another one. I think they got to win. I mean, they got a four seed, which honestly might hurt them in a way because, you know, you're talking about probably getting what Iowa, yeah, in 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 the quarterfinals. That's not an easy game. I think everybody yeah. likes Iowa right now. Like Iowa's kind of that pick right now that everybody's falling in love with because we see they've got Keegan Murray who's terrific, but they've got more than just Keegan Murray. They got to get Patrick McCaffrey back healthy. Um, so I would go three. I, I know I chose three of them there. I took three off the board. Uh, who else are we forgetting about? 
you know, in terms of the SMU? bubble, there's yeah, I mentioned SMU RC. I mean yeah. VCU. Um, yep. you know, they've got they've got work to do. How about uh, Dayton? Yeah, Day- Dayton probably has to win the A10 tournament. Maybe if they made a run to the final. Uh, same thing with North Texas. North Texas is really you know that UTEP loss hurt them this weekend, but they have a yeah. chance. You know, if they don't win it, but they they really should. Kind of the situation like Loyola Chicago was in the past, this past weekend. They've got a shot if they don't win it, but you'd rather take care of your business. Um, you know, and then I think there's obviously a case. You know, some of the teams in the top line. You know, Kentucky if they win the SEC tournament, you get the number one seed. I think that's important. Um, you know, Auburn trying to stay on the number one line. Kansas could make a push for the one if they win the Big Twelve. You know, I mentioned earlier, Baylor could maybe make a push for one number one overall. Uh, you know, should they win the Big Twelve tournament, have fifteen quadrant one wins? So there's there's a lot there's a lot here without that. The the coach with the most to gain. Let, let, let's go in a positive direction. Mm-hmm. By the way, I, I think another one going back to a team with the with the most to gain might be Alabama. Because they can get Kentucky in their second game, and I think they can get some mojo back that they really haven't had. Like they they've been so inconsistent all year, and, and it feels like an eternity ago that they beat um, they beat Gonzaga in Seattle, right? They beat Houston. It, it feels like so long ago that we were talking about Alabama. I mean, we were talking about Alabama at one point as a legitimate Final Four contender, and, and nobody said that for a, at least a month now. So I would put Alabama in that kind of group of of teams that you know could gain or lose a lot momentum was uh coaches go ahead rc who, who who's a coach that, that's got a lot in the line this week i think penny does i yeah. i think penny has a lot on the line i mean we went from you know they started out with all these expectations all this talent yep. it looked like it imploded and now they've gotten it back together so there's going to be change there's going to be a lot of change there. What does it look like? I I, I think Penny has a lot. He can come are out. Are you buying of this thing. them, Randolph? Are you buying Memphis? Like some people I hear are like buying them now, and like, man, I wouldn't want to play Memphis in the NCAA tournament. I'm still cautiously optimistic about him and saying like, it's the AAC. Let's settle down here. They're the most talented team in the, in the league, though, and they have the talent that can go oh. against anybody else. So they're a team that. If you're not on your best, no matter what you're, 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 you know, wherever you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're lined up to be, they're talented enough to beat you. So I think that, you know, they, they're going to be able to play match up with your athleticism point guard play. We know is always going to be a concern for them, but aside from that, they got the talent when they go out there and we know they got the ability to defend. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin. Yeah. I've got two for you. The first one is, is North Carolina and Hubert Davis. I think, you know, it's so important for this team to build off of what they did against Duke heading into the NCAA tournament. Because, look, you know, yes, they've won five straight, but that included an overtime win over Syracuse, a struggle past Louisville. Like, yep. like let's not act as though North Carolina came into that Duke game, you know, firing on all cylinders. They weren't. And I think, you know, there's so much you could build for, for this group if, if they make a good run here. And they don't have to win it, but – you, know, you, you can't get bounced early. It, it would be such a, I think, demoralizing thing to, to have all that energy and then losing your first game in, in the conference tournament. And I think the other coach is Mike Woodson at Indiana. I know we kind of mentioned them already, but you know, it's easy to recruit and easy to sell a brand when you haven't won any games and you haven't lost any games. And if they miss the NCAA tournament in year one in a very similar way to you know, some of the struggles that they've had the last several years, you know, late season you know, collapses, offense not you know, overly inspiring, you know, it's going to be hard. They're going to be, you know, and, and again, you know, it's Indiana, man. Like it is, you know, one of those places where the pressure cooker turns on early. And, you know, if, if they bow out here in the first round of the big, big 10 tournament and they go to the NIT, it, it is going to be a tough off season. It's going to be a really tough off season. All right. I, I got one for you guys. I, I think this might be the number one that people are kind of overlooking Mike Bray. They're an 11 seed right now. They've got one of the top freshmen in the country in, in Blake Wesley, who, who could be a first-round pick, should be a first-round pick. We thought they were going to be in, you know, second in the, in the ACC there. Um, we thought they were going to be in as a lock for the most part. Now they're kind of, what, in the 11, right in that 11 range. Then they might get Virginia Tech in the quarterfinals. That, that is not an easy game. 
if they lose that game, they're sweating it out. And if Mike Bray, there was a lot of pressure, not again. Mike Bray is never going to be fired at Notre Dame. Everybody loves Mike Bray. There's no chance he gets fired. But if he doesn't get in the tournament and he loses Wesley, does he go in to Jack Swarbrick and say, you know what? This is, you know what? I'm done. I'm, I'm good. I want to go to the beach in Delaware. I'm, I'm going to drink. I'm going to have fun. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I don't know, but I, I feel like this, this <laughs> season had so much promise halfway through it of them not being on the bubble, but like locking themselves in. And part of the problem was they're in the ACC. So nobody other than Duke can lock themselves in. And we've already talked about Wake. Um, you know, you, you can talk about Miami, Carolina, because of the win against Duke, they're fine. But I, I think Mike Bray, this is a big week and a big game against probably, you know, it's Clemson, Virginia Tech. Uh, I think it's going to be Virginia Tech, but who knows with the Hokies. I, I struggle with it because, again, they're the second seed in a tournament. That just tells you how bad things are. So if they were to lose, yeah. Yeah. everyone else should be sweating. Then. I mean, Miami, uh, <laughs> I mean, Wake, like everybody else should and, be and sweating. I think Notre Dame, I think Notre Dame's still a first four team at worst, even if they lose to Virginia Tech. Yeah, I think they're in. But I think but again, to, it's right? one of those like you're 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 kind of backing your way in at that point. And yeah. Yeah. you know, people are talking about are you in, are you not in? I, again, I, I think they're in, but it's one of those things where uh, I think it's an important game for Mike Bray. I think they can, you know, they, they beat Virginia Tech. Then they get uh, then they get Carolina potentially. You win a couple of these, you get some momentum. You can go all the way up, you know, from a 10 or an 11. You probably don't want to go to an 8-9, but that's probably where you end up. Who else? What, what other coaches? I, I would say Juwan Howard is somebody coming yeah. back now that, that there's probably some pressure on Juwan Howard. First of all, in the in the uh, handshake line, there might be some pressure on Juwan Howard now, right? I, I think he's good. I, I, I think now, you know, they've been offered so many jobs coming yeah. after Juwan now. He's come out of this. I mean, he's he's the reigning national coach of the year. I, I don't think there's any pressure on him. I think I don't mean that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, there's no yeah, pressure on his he, job. He, 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 even at, I think it's just him staying though. He has does to he win say, the public, I think it's does public he say, perception. Yeah, that, that's my thing. I'm thinking, does yeah. he say, you know what? I don't want to deal with this college crap no more. I'm going to go get me an NBA job. I mean, that's more of where I think his pressure is going to be because he's yeah. got to be thinking that, like, you know, now he's a hot, tomato, a hot commodity on the next level. So there's got to be some legitimate concern. Did that though. hurt him, though? Do you think that incident hurt him in any way with being hired at the next level? I don't think they care because they don't shake hands anyway. <laughs> they don't. You know, they hug. Just sit there and wave. A yeah, lot of them hug, though, the RC. Yeah, yeah, but if you're friends with them or something like that, right. but they can just exactly. wave. I mean, yeah. Nobody. The coaches six, wave. Ain't nobody, yeah, yeah. Ain't right. nobody coaches wave. Anyway. The star players generally, some of them, KD doesn't do a lot of it, but like, you know, you see a bunch of the star players hugging. 